Hey nerds, welcome back to The Paper Fold. I am your host, Sarah, the paper nerd, and I'm so glad to be nerding out with you today on my favorite topic, stationery. I don't have much in terms of announcements. Uh, The fall issue of Stationery Trends is just coming out. It has one of my favorite cover stories to compile each year, Stationery Design A to Z. Work-wise, I'm putting together my winter issue and looking ahead to the winter shows and noted. There are also two amazing greeting card competitions, the Louis and the Noted at Noted Awards to consider entering if you are a maker. The Louis are being chaired by the uber-talented Kate of Quick Brown Fox Letterpress. I am on the committee and she is already doing a phenomenal job. And best of all, there is actually a physical award ceremony being planned to take place at Noted San Francisco, co-located with SF Now, April 28th to 29th of next year. There's also the Noted at Noted product awards, which I am again going to be a part of, and I'm so excited to see it all come together. Go to greetingcard.org for any info on any of these exciting events. My guest today is Lana Efron of Lana Shop. You may already be familiar with this Colorado illustration studio with the wonderful tagline, spreading kindness one card at a time. For about a decade now, Lana has been doing just that with what she calls her paintings of nature and kindness. As you'll hear, after about a decade of trying, she is now in anthropology with her wallpaper designs as well as some Hanukkah home decor. Three cheers for Pretty Judaica. Lana balances this with raising her two adorable little ones, a son and a daughter, as you can see in her vibrant Instagram feed. She runs her business out of her home with a few employees who come in to help. So it is very easy to look at Lana's life and brand from the outside, see her success and all that cuteness and all that kindness and wonder how she has it all so together. But life is not an Instagram feed. Lana made several intentional decisions and choices to enable her to function in a good place and enable both her business and family to thrive. I'll have her here right after this to share more. Hey, paper peeps. So I can't go any further without waxing eloquent about one of my all-time favorite houses of paper, Girl with Knife. Watching this dynamo maker's dramatic ascent over the past few years, I can only conclude that this exquisite stationary range, as well as its equally exquisite creator, Alicia Castaldi, is truly cutting edge in every conceivable sense of the world. When I think about how much Alicia has accomplished with this brand since she debuted it in 2019, even I find myself somewhat speechless. You see, lately Girl With Knife has been on something of an industry awards bender. First, in 2020, the Palm Springs brand swept the inaugural Noted It Noted Awards, winning Best Color Combo and Best Use of Profanity. Guys, there were only 10 categories. Girl With Knife won a fifth of them. Then, In 2021, Girl With Knife did it again, taking Snarkiest Card and, again, Best Use of Profanity. That means Girl With Knife is the only maker yet to win this National Industry Award for Profanity. That is quite a feat in this day and age. There are a lot of great cussing cards out there. On top of that, this past summer, Girl With Knife had to make room on its crowded awards shelf for a Louis. For those of you who don't know, the Louis are the Academy Awards of the greeting card industry. I have been covering them and judging them since I got into the industry in the 90s, but this past year was its 32nd edition. Card makers are a very friendly community, but we all tend to get a little competitive with these awards. Well, this past year, Girl With Knife had three finalists and was competing against major card hitters like American Greetings and Hallmark. These companies have big budgets and staffs of some of the best writers and illustrators in the industry. Girl With Knife is literally a girl with a knife coming up with fantastic work. Well, Alicia bested them in the friendship encouragement humorous category with the Friends Through Thick and Thin card. It documents decades of friendship through eyebrow waxing trends, and it is just a small sample of the glamorous and brilliant wisdom that this range puts out in the world 
like Starbucks pours coffee. A lot of work goes into every last offering. Uh, Alicia carefully collages each creation to life, slice by nimble slice. Choose from an array of cards, journals, notepads, and gift wrap. You'll quickly realize that each selection is feminine, authentic, and unapologetic, not unlike Alicia herself. Meanwhile, I hear that a huge product drop awaits us in 2022. Candles, throw pillows, weekly planners, and art prints are all in production as we speak. I, for one, can barely wait. And not only is Girl With Knife winning one award after another, Alicia is emerging as a style icon in her own right. Just pick up the latest edition of What Women Create wherever you buy magazines to see what I mean. In the glorious fall issue, Alicia opens up about her backstory and process, and trust me, you're going to need a tissue. There, you will also get an eye full of Knife House, aka Alicia's workspace, and you see that this is not just a stationary brand, it's a lifestyle. During quarantine, Alicia gutted and renovated this Palm Springs mid-century house, which she designed to incorporate all the elements of her brand. It's like a concept album that's a house. And unsurprisingly, it's already been featured on HGTV.com. Her throw pillows are on the couches, her art prints are on the wall, and the color patterns throughout mimic her stationary palettes. It's a place to host events, parties, and fashion shoots, and to entertain buyers, and, of course, to get work done. It's not too surprising that there is also coverage of Alicia, Girl with Knife, and Knife House in the October issue of Palm Springs Life. Knife House is already setting itself apart as a coveted destination in this famed California resort city. So... If you are like me and you can't make it to Palm Springs just now to live your best life, you can still make it to girlwithknife.com and start living your own personal season of fierce. Whatever your needs, I guarantee your stationery will slay. All right, I have Lana here in the taper fold. Welcome, Lana. Hi, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So one thing that I love is, uh, you know, on your Instagram feed, um, you describe your work as offering paintings of nature and kindness. Um, I love that description of your work. I would love to hear you speak to how you arrived at this description and how you dispense kindness in painting form. Oh, well, you know, I'm so lucky. I live in beautiful Colorado, so I'm surrounded by the trees and mountains. And so a lot of my work has, you know, flowers and those adorable forest animals in it. That's just what I'm surrounded by and inspired by. Um, and my hope is to make art genuinely that can make you smile. Um, to feel calm, even if it's just for a moment. You know, it's been such a challenging time and I just want to make something that makes people feel good um, and emphasize and bring awareness back to nature and the sweeter side of life and all the goodness that we have. I mean, you really, really get a sense of that in your work and just sort of like the stillness that you find in nature and um, hopefully can um, bring to your, you know, to your, to, you know, each of us can bring to ourselves when we're not feeling so calm and we can use that. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> That's my so, hope. Yeah. And um, so you, I mean, you've been doing this, this is not your first rodeo. Uh, you've been doing this, you've had your shop for 10 years now. Um, and, you know, I always tell people not to compare their first act to someone's, you know, third act or second act or you know when they've developed it how do you think your brand has evolved since starting it 10 years ago when you look at your early stuff do you like there's got to be some evolution there oh yeah I mean yeah it's wild to think back um that's been 10 years I mean I really I started out doing weddings um I loved working with couples and doing wedding imitations but the stationary line was always my big vision um, so it, yeah, <laughs> I wound up going to the national stationery show and I didn't have a stationery line yet. 
Um, <laughs> but once I signed up, I was like, if I sign up, like I will make a stationary line. So, you know, it just forced me to come out with 50 car designs and some gift wrap and, you know, showcasing at the trade show was really when it all started for me and um, met some amazing companies there. And so that's been, you know, a big piece of my business. I think illustrating nature has always been really present mm -hmm. in my work. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, you know, thinking back to the early days, I used to have my parents help me string gift tags in my living room for like hours and hours, you know. Um, and now to think I have, you know, two people in my basement right now helping to actually package orders. You know, it's so cool to see the the evolution of it all. Um, Absolutely. I, I love that you took a boost to get yourself going. I mean, we all, like as creatives, we all like, you know, some of us are procrastinators and need, not that you're a procrastinator, but for some of us, that's what you need oh, to I do am. to get going. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to dream big and go for it and then figure <laughs> it out. See, and I'm more the person who might never take the booth because I would feel like I need to make elaborate plans for everything. And like, and I, you know, <laughs> if you don't feel like you're there, like you're just not ready to take that step. I love that you just pulled the plug and we're just like, I'm doing it. Like I signed the paperwork. Totally. <laughs> I better have some yeah. time to put in my booth. Yeah. I yeah, exactly. Hey, paper peeps. So longtime paper fold listeners know that Kitty Meow Boutique has been a fabulous client of mine for some time now. And I am so proud today to be able to help promote the many, many projects that the human fireball behind this range, aka Katherine Hildner, currently has going on. First and foremost, Kitty Meow Boutique is a Chicago land house of paper and gifts. This stationary range has a sweet side and a witty side not unlike you and your moods, I'm guessing. But whatever your current state, this range of cards, invitations, journals, coasters, art prints, enamel pins, and gifts pack a most polished, brilliant punch. Think of your favorite, most flattering outfit and how great you look and feel in it. Kitty Meow puts it in paper form to share with the world. Whether your persona is Audrey Hepburn or Betty Page, you'll find something to perfectly showcase your message here. But this range is about much more than and just surface appearances. It's empowering and not just for you, but the people you send the cards to. Even whoever sees you using that journal, at its core, Kitty Meow Boutique is authentic and it honors our most valued connections. For example, Catherine sent me her latest range, the Entrepreneur Collection for consideration in stationary trends and girl, it knocked my socks off. Seriously, I cannot believe this did not exist until 2021. The world has always needed a card that reads, you are more than a customer, you are like family, love and appreciate you. Or, cue the confetti cannons, can't wait to start working on this project together. If your work has any sort of entrepreneurial component to it, check them out. Your clients are going to be friggin' knocked out and begging you for more business because I can guarantee you whoever else is competing for their business is not sending them these amazing cards. Of course, Kitty Meow is also available wholesale. You can shop Kitty Meow on Fair 24-7 and it is also in the Best of Show showroom at Atlanta Market. Thanks to the strength of this paper range, Catherine has seen it go from being carried in seven stores to over 600 and 50 stores in under two years. That's astronomical. But here's the thing, Kitty Meow Boutique is not just about finding that single card or pin. If you too are a maker with a dream, Catherine wants to help you bring it to beautiful life as you can see for yourself on the education tab of her site. She already offers KMB Signature Collective, a mastermind for women in the product-based business world who have an idea and a plan but can use some intensive guidance and support. 
Now Catherine just unveiled the KMB Powerhouse Product Party. Essentially, it's a three-month program that you can stop or start at any time, and each month delves into a topic such as email marketing or getting traction on wholesale platforms. This topic is explored all month and closes with a live training. Other perks include a private Facebook group, virtual happy hours, a production and resource guide, incentives and prizes, even a weekly check-in. I just love how Catherine is creating a community with every last thing she does. She's doing it through her education as well as with every last piece of stationery she prints. So whether you are wanting to reconnect with someone you have fallen out of touch with, thank a client for their business, or maybe you want much, much more than that to manifest your dreams into reality, Kitty Meow Boutique is the place to start. Make it all happen at kittymeowboutique.com and tell them Sarah sent you. My guest today is Lana Efron of Lana Shop. So you started doing wedding invitations. I'm just going to take a guess here and say you were probably in the process of getting married. Or had just gotten uh, married. Which is you- I'm trying to think when I get married. It was before I got married. It was I before. Think, yeah, it was, it was actually before. I think, you know, a lot of my friends that knew mm-hmm. me just mm-hmm. asked for custom work. So it kind of just like evolved, in, like naturally. They were just asking for it. Right. Um, I mean, it just seems, it's just so funny to me that I, I do feel like a lot of uh, makers get into the business when they themselves get married, when their friends start getting married, they start with wedding of the then they, then they have a baby and it's, then their work changes and it, and it just like, it continues to evolve as they go kind of go through the circle of life. I mean, but how better to have a well-informed line, a range of work than like, I just went through this. I just had a baby. I just stayed up all right. Night. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, keeps changing as we grow for sure. So I know that COVID sh- kind of really, you know, obviously shaped how you operated your business. So you had already, I was a little confused about this, but you had already closed your studio and moved it home two years uh, uh, ago. So um, it was already, you had already moved it when COVID started Correct. but then COVID started and none of your employees those two employees that you mentioned that are in your basement right now obviously could not come in your house um so um I would love to hear if you could take me through your basic work life setup um during those times and kind of how you got through it and ran a business throughout it I mean you were shipping product I oh see. yeah Yeah. I mean, oh, what a hard time. I kind of blacked it out those early days, as I'm sure a lot of us have. Um, But I mean, I was so lucky in the sense that I do have a studio that we built in my basement. Um, I I did that once I had my son. I just decided to close my my studio in Denver um, and move home. So so I'm so lucky. So where was Uh, my studio was in the art district in Denver. How like long a, of a commute was it from your house? It was like a 10 minute drive. Um, so it's not far at all, but you know, once you have a kid, like those 10 minutes back and forth are, oof, that's everything. It's like, yeah, <laughs> um, I know. Every minute's precious. Right. You get a call that someone fell or, you know, is sick and it's just like, you're, you know, that you're clutching your, <laughs> you've got the white knuckles as you're dry, as you're rushing home. And, you know, it's just, totally. it's just hard. It's so hard. The, and I was bringing him there with me and like, he was just, you know, in the envelopes and, you know, I would bring all my paints back home at the end of the day. It was like so much back and forth. And I mean, um, it's, I feel like people don't talk about like how hard it is to, um, when you are a new mom or a young mom and you have like one of the, a toddler and you're not, and you're sort of like not doing things in the traditional way and you're trying to work and be there for your child and, you know, run a home and, you know, 50 other things. And it's just like, it's nonstop chaos really. And it's just a matter of like, it truly is finding the least chaotic way to kind of operate and and like get you through and keep everyone's sanity and you know keep those cards 100 percent 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is chaos, but you, I mean, if you love what you do and you love your kids, like you just, you do it all, you know, Absolutely. and you just figure it out. Absolutely. Um, when, when my daughter was maybe, I don't know, nine, she must've been about nine months old. And I, I tried to get a nanny and I would work upstairs while the nanny was downstairs. And I like found myself getting jealous of the nanny and like not liking how my nanny, the nanny was talking to her and, you know, like a million other things. And it was just I wasn't doing anything well. And, um, and I think everybody, if you're, if you're on that crazy path, like everybody just finds their own solution. That sounds kind of nutty to everyone else. So um, I'll stop talking about mine. I want to hear more about yours. No, I, I totally agree. When the kids are upstairs, it's all about my, my Bluetooth headphones. So I like pretend like I'm somewhere else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but, you know, so it's been, it was so wonderful during the COVID days to have my studio home already. Um, but, you know, I was also super pregnant, so I had to be extra safe. Um, so unfortunately, my, you know, my, my girls couldn't come and their whole role was to package orders. So it's hard to do that remotely. Um, but I just, you know, found other things they could do from home during that time. And, so you, were you know, I, so you were just like giving them the purchase order and the shipping information and they would pack it and, and ship it out. And pre COVID that's what they would do. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so at COVID I, I didn't have that. Um, I would sometimes like leave cards on my porch that they would pick up and bring home and, and then drop back off on my porch and I'd take them inside. But you know, it, it was mostly just back. It was me in the shop, like, like the early days. And, you know, I just relied on my family. My husband's also an entrepreneur. So we kind of would switch days with the kids. Well, we had one kid then. <laughs> um, so your son was how old when COVID? Two-ish. Like yeah. Two-ish. Two. That's a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> um, um, but, and then, you and know, I kind of just embraced the slowdown a little. Right. I mean, you have to, you really, you really don't have a choice. So, you know, like you've got to work with it. Like you could, you know, you could feel sorry for yourself and, you know, like whatever, but, um, you've got it. Like you have to find, you have to find a solution. And, um, and, and I, I think it's amazing. I think it's great that you did. Um, were, were you already set up with Shopify at that point? Yep, I had my website and selling wholesale and um, was working on a lot of different brand collaborations at that time. Um, so business was, you know, moving and everything was going on. And I, I don't know, it was kind of this this sweeter time to connect with my customers. I feel like everyone just kind of understood, like, things might take a little longer. Um, but I really think we're, everyone was a little more connected than ever. Um, and just very kind to each other, which is like everything I'm about. So I right. just, it was good, good, goodness. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, we're lucky we're in this industry, you know, that we're not like, you know, delivering life-saving medicine or like, you know, something Right. there's like a certain urgency. And, um, and I, I do think COVID kind of gave us, um, there were, there are some silver linings and it did sort of, at least sort of uh, give us the self-awareness to some of us rather to stop, look around and, um, you know, look at the way we've been running our lives and like maybe how we can, you know, do it in less of a, you know, in a, in a way that's friendlier to ourselves and each other. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so now, um, you know, you told when we spoke uh, before this interview, you told me you came up with like a really amazing solution to retain your sanity in all this and sort of like take some time for yourself, um, which as creatives, like we, we all need. You can't put out great work unless you're recharging your batteries, you know. So I want to, uh, can you share what that was? Is Sure. 
Um, so, so my son was about two at the time and every morning I, I just woke up to his cry or his calling for mommy. Um, that was just like my alarm clock. And I just realized that if I could wake up a little before he does, and, you know, we hear so much now about these morning routines. Um, I was like, I got to try this. Like I can make myself a morning person and maybe you're, maybe this is better for you in the evening. You know, you, you do what's best for you. Um, but so what I started to do was to wake up at five o'clock. Um, and, and I would have my coffee. I would write down, you know, what's one thing that would make today amazing to kind of like censor myself. Um, I'm not like a, a big journaler. So like just one little line about that. Um, and it would really set the tone for the day. And then I wouldn't check my email or go on Instagram. I would just work on that one priority project that had to get done. Um, well, I so had, funny. you know, that hour or so. Mm -hmm. And because the rest of the day was like, you never know what's going to happen. You never know, you know, what meltdown or crazy thing comes up. So this way, like you always had your little space. Um, so that's worked really well, well for me. I mean, I, I love it. I think it's great. I, uh, I, you know, I, I, most of us are like, uh, wrens or night owls, obviously you're a wren. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm more of a night owl myself, but I, yeah. I love, I love like knocking out work at night when um, I'm not going to be distracted by email or meetings or a million other things. Mm. And also I just feel like no one else is working. It's like, there's more like creative energy at these, at these yes. odd periods of day. Um, at least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> I don't know. If it's yeah, fun. no, absolutely. And, uh, and I love that you pick like that one project that like you trying to get done but that like the distractions of the day um are you know like keeping from and so at least you can like knock that out like here's my to-do list like I have a few things on here that just appear again and again that I'm that I'm trying to get out of mm. the way. um for me uh it's mostly uh like writing articles like that's what I need to just be like away from the world nobody talked to me and just focused on that um whereas yeah. you know writing an Instagram post or you know st other stuff I can be a little more distracted but um I think finding that time yeah. to just block out for yourself where you're like nobody bugged me yeah I'm not gonna bug my you know not, I'm not gonna let anything bug me and you know leave me alone <laughs> right yeah, I mean, as an artist, it's like you don't feel like painting all the time. So it's really hard. You have to like have that creative like butterflies in your tummy ready to go feeling to paint. So you have to kind of find when that's best for you. For me, it's just wound up being really early. Like you said, when it's quiet and you just do that first thing. Yeah, I love um, that. My, my my husband's in finance and I remember early on in our marriage, I had to be like, look, I, you know, what I do is not like adding up a big stack of numbers, like which you can be in any mood for. Like when I'm writing an right. article, I got to be in the right place. I have to like have my ducks in a row and I'm, you know, and I'm a, I'm a sensitive artistic type. If you throw me off, like I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to get any writing done. It's not, you know, it's, it's a process and it's not just like a clinical, you know, type of procedure that I'm doing here. Totally. Yeah. yeah. You know, they say so much about like all these things to get done. You know, they say like, I have this full to focus planner. I don't know if you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it, their big thing is like the big three, like every day was your big three items to get done. And I just realize that three is never going to get done like that's way too much <laughs> like one thing pick your one thing of the day oh absolutely I feel like so many of our disappointments are just have to do with our expectations like if you're if you're thinking you're going to get three big things done you're already setting I mean for me at least you're I would be setting totally. myself up for failure there is no way I'm getting three things done I'm lucky to get like three quarters of one thing done and that's like a cool right. success so exactly and so you know I think a, a lot of it is especially creatives just like being kinder to yourself being more you know gentle with yourself um when you're trying to 
you know, create, I mean, we're not, you know, you can't just like wield a whip and expect, you know, a beautiful painting <laughs> to come out of it. Um, right. So, um, so uh, we talked a little bit about like the, um, you know, the stage you're in sort of informing the product you're coming up with. Um, and so, you know, I feel like being a mother really, really colors, um, you know, the, your wallpaper um, for anthropology. Um, I mean, it's not technically, I was looking on the site and it's not technically nursery. I mean, how do they position it? Like, is it, I wouldn't, well, I want to hear a lot about the product, but obviously, as you can tell, I have a lot of questions. Is it a, would you define it as nursery wallpaper for starters? Well, I try to make my designs so it can grow with the kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to just be for kids. I think that because I initially painted my very first wallpaper for my son's room, mm -hmm. that was kind of my inspiration. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, I have to learn how to make wallpaper. Um, <laughs> So, but my hope is that's not all my work isn't too like kidsy. It's it has that whimsical feel, but it's more like sophisticated and can can grow with them. But you can also put in like your mountain cabin bathroom or yeah, like I don't think it's necessary. I mean, like it is, and it it's. I mean, I'm I'm pulling up your designs as we speak. Um, it, <laughs> it is very like it is very anthropology. Like it's very sophisticated and artful and kind of earthy um but uh and and you know any kid who's gonna have this in their room is like pretty damn cool like <laughs> just gonna say <laughs> but, um, but yeah I mean you have peaceful forest I'm looking at their site you have flora you have uh, forest and fauna you have garden you have peaceful forest and you have mountain animal and like um eating garden is very like that is that's that could be in a powder room or a feature wall you know like it definitely is it's not um just juvenile uh by um but it has that sort of like i don't know like starry eyed child childhood you know fantasy quality to it I guess. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the look you were going for? You nailed it on. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So how did, they, so how did this arise with anthropology? Did they come to you? Did you go to them? Like I want all the details. Mm. Well, I think I have been trying to get into anthropology for 10 years. Um, <laughs> I definitely, <laughs> um, you know, it's been, it's been me pursuing them for sure. Um, I've had many calls with many different buyers. You know, I'd, I'd get ready for a call and then the buyer would switch and they'd have to postpone the call. You know, it was like a, a long um, love-hate relationship. Um, I definitely reached out to them first mm -hmm. and it's, and just gone through all the stages with them. And I think mm -hmm. what I realized now looking back that mm -hmm. now that I'm in anthropology is you really can't take it personally. It's just waiting for that right piece of work that makes sense to be in there. Um, and so for it to be the wallpaper as the first mm -hmm. right piece of work was mm -hmm. so um, just made sense after this whole 10 year process of trying to be an anthropology because it's like oh yeah that's that's the right fit and this is a piece of work I'm actually really proud of um so that was amazing when when they saw the wallpaper and that's what they wanted to carry first um and now we're doing actually some collaborations together that'll launch this holiday season so it's just like find that one piece that's right and then it'll open the door to more yeah, no, I, I think, I think that is so wise. Uh, you know, we all want everything to happen yesterday. And, uh, and, you know, often the stuff that's the stuff that is the most meaningful to us, like it doesn't happen easy. And that's why it, it is so meaningful is because you had to work for it for 10 years to get it. And, yeah. uh, you know, it really, when it came so when it came together it was you know it was just it was just there was all it was it was 
Jewish people called Besher. You know, it's like fate. It was just meant to be. Uh, yes. But it just took a little preparation. Um, meanwhile, yeah. I see on this site you this Happy Holidays dish talk. Is that is that your upcoming? Oh, is that on their site now? It's on their site. It's on I didn't know it's on their site yet. Wow, you know, I have and, to go see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I guess so. Maybe it's on there early. You know, we had a really early uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur this year. Um, it was right after Labor Day. Rosh Hashanah started. So that means that the, um, I haven't looked at the dates, but that probably means Hanukkah is a little earlier this year. Hanukkah so, is very early this year. So that's probably why they just yeah, so launched it. Welcome. Wow. Thanks for telling me. You're so welcome. <laughs> I'm so happy to be the bearer yeah. of good news. I, but I was going to say, so the design is adorable. It's a dish towel. It says happy holidays. It's got, you know, lined up hala in like a heart shape. It's it's beautiful. It's clever, and I'm just gonna say, as a Jewish person, <laughs> like, don't come after me, anyone. But like, most Judaica is like out and out hideous, and so like any <laughs> anything you can add to the conversation that is like stylish and cute and clever and heartfelt and fun, like the. The Jewish market is going to eat it all up because, you know, Christmas, you get all the cute product and all the Hanukkah stuff is ugly. So, like, keep doing it, please. Yep. I'm Jewish, so I had to represent and bring yeah. some cute designs. Yes. I'm so yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I so I get it. I you as a member of the tribe. Like, I, I get mean, it. You probably, got yep. probably, um, you probably got some really pretty Judaic wedding gifts, too. <laughs> <laughs> We oh, have some stuff that was so snow. I mean, like not to like rag on my family. It's they, you know, there's just not a, a lot of stuff to shop. But um, like we right. got some, re we got some, we got some stuff that just like I was like, is this a joke? <laughs> so funny. I have to send you some of our Hanukkah um, gift wrap with dogs oh, on it. That. You'll love it. They're I wearing menorahs. Love yeah, that. I would love that. I mean, this. I, I bought a Jonathan Adler menorah a couple of years ago and I, it was just like, it was one of the happiest purchases I've ever made. I was like, thank God, thank goodness he's like up in the style of this holiday so that, you know, so that my, my table looks good. Anyway. Love um, <laughs> so, um, so it came about, um, and then, so one, but once you got the wallpaper, was it, did it play out like you got you did the purchase order you got that in motion and then they reached back out to you about like holiday collaborations I guess for um my listeners who you know fantasize about this kind of thing to give them an yeah. idea of how it played out I think is would be really helpful sure really cool. absolutely so with the wallpaper I actually I drop ship it all Mm -hmm. So it's not like they place one PO. So it's like an ongoing partnership. Okay. Um, and you kind of like split the royalties. Um, okay. okay. I so understand. that's how the wallpaper okay. is working. And I think okay. some of their artists for wallpaper, it's exclusive to them and mm -hmm. they print it. So, mm -hmm. so that's just another route that you could do. Um, and then, you know, now that I have, you know, it's, it's our business, is all about relationships. So sure. now that I'm, I'm friends with the buyers and, you know, you can present your work in a very um, natural way and be like, here are some new designs I recently did. And that made her be really excited about our tea towels that I showed her mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. then together we made some custom tea towel designs. Um, yeah. We actually made three total. Um, so it was just like a collaborative, natural process now that, you know, I, I know them. Um, and you just want to make great designs for each other, you know, for them, for us. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope you guys like them. I love them. I love them. And I just want to say like, as a general word to makers, like, uh, like with the publication, um, once I work with someone one time, like you can be the most talented maker in the world, but if you do not return emails, if you don't like, if you're not like on the ball or you're not, like generally professional, like I'm not going to work with you again. So I think like 
it's so important um you know once once you get once that something starts happening for you and you are fortunate enough to get the foot your foot in the door like don't don't mess it up like don't assume anything is set like you still have to keep you know deliver what you promise but then once there is the trust and that relationship because this business is all about relationships then it's like they're you know they will call you every time they're you know there's they have something right for you and you have this income stream and this relationship that you know wasn't there two years ago or that you were just trying to get two years ago like you were just dreaming absolutely like you know the the buyers for these companies seem so uh foreign but Mm -hmm. once you're once you know them like they're just people and they too want to work with kind you know uh responsive people um so everything you're saying is exactly right um we do a lot with terrain um okay anthropology's garden brand yes yes um and i and i love the buyers you know i i just did one of the buyers her personal wedding um oh that's awesome you just become friends and they're in philadelphia my husband's from philly so when i'm back there you know we always try to get a glass of wine together so yes it's good advice for everyone it really is it really it really is uh you know they are they're all just they're all just people trying to like do their job well and so anybody who can help you know if you can help them do that all the better and and i with the publication if i i mean i i will go as far as to say like if 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 i hear or i see that someone is like not kind I will not run them because I don't want any of our readers dealing with that. I like, I like, I don't want them having to do a purchase order with somebody who's not going to be nice to them. I want that. I want them to do it with someone who's nice, who's going to, you know, deliver the product when they say they're going to and be cool about it. Like, I don't want to be any part of like any equation with someone not being nice to anybody. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so um, last um, where, what do you see as next for you? Uh, and, and what are you working on now? Like what's on your, like what's on your agenda in terms of the big picture, uh, right now? Yeah. Um, so I, so I just had a baby girl. Um, she's now four months old. Yay. Um, and, and like we talked about earlier, I think, thank you. I think, you know, what? um, with my kids, I, 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 and trying to be more purposeful where I'm spending my time since time mm-hmm. is so precious. Sure. Um, so, so like one of my favorite products that I think I'm going to be focusing a lot on is called Packadoo. My son named it. Um, and it's these, these colorful ABC flashcards for kids, um, like a learning tool. Um, so that came out of not finding ones I liked for my son and painting them. So those are bringing me so much joy because I see all these families using it. Um, so I'm going to come out with some more editions of Packadoo. And then I am um, focusing more on the wallpaper and room decor. And I'm illustrating my first children's book. Wow. Um, so I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, kids and and more that world you're just leaning in and thank you so much for coming by such a blast thanks Sarah thank you so much Lana for coming on the paper fold I have always been very proud of my gaydar as well as my knack for spotting members of the tribe aka fellow Jews looks like it failed me here regardless I am so grateful she is classing up the Judaica market one holla dish towel from the anthropology at a time after we recorded Lana kindly sent me a few rolls of her Hanukkah wrap as well as some gift tags they are adorable and festooned with various breeds of dogs commemorating the holiday with bandanas and headbands adorned with jewish stars and menorahs between this and my jonathan adler dash hound menorah the holiday is going to be looking pretty good in my house our dog scout is going to be in very good company now i just have to start shopping since hanukkah starts on november 28th Oive. So finally, thank you so much for listening. Again, Sharon Glassman of Smile Songs is the composer of my theme music and now the sound editor of this podcast too. See and hear more of her delightful stationery that sings at smilesongs.com. 
And if you like what you're hearing, please give me a five-star rating. And if you feel like waxing eloquent, please feel free to leave a review too. Thank you so much, nerds. Stay safe. <laughs>